So today we are going to create an ultimate Google Calendar agent. This agent is so intelligent that by just typing the message, what meeting you want to create, with whom you want to create, do you want to update the meeting, do you want to delete the meeting, it will understand properly and redirect to proper tool and take action on your behalf. So let's see in action how does it work. Let's say we write create a Google Calendar event title project kickoff on Sunday at 11 a.m. So as you can see, this is Sunday and there is no event over here. So let before sending the message, let's do one thing. Let's start the test workflow and let's send the message. So if you go over here, you can see that the AI agent started running. It is automatically understanding that I have to create a new event. So in the right hand side, you can see that the event has been created with title project kickoff and it is scheduled at 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. So it is understanding that I have to create an event for one hour if no end time has been specified. So let's do one thing. Let's come over here. And also we have got the description that the event has been created and some kind of a message. This message can be changed as per the prompt you give. So let's do one thing. Let's say update the event from 11 a.m. to 9 a.m. So before sending the message, let's do one thing. Let's run the test workflow. Since this is in the testing phase, so we have to again and again come and start the uh, test workflow. In the production mode, when we start this thing, uh, make it active, it will run whenever we send the message. Okay. So let's send it. So now if we come over here, we see that it got the event. It's ran the update event part and sent the message to a telegram. And right hand side, we can see that the event has been updated from 11 a.m. to 9 a.m. And if you go to telegram, we can see that we have got the uh, proper message that the event has been updated. Let's do one thing. Let's delete this event. So delete this event. Also one thing, did you understand? Over here, we told that update the event. But which event? It automatically understood that I am talking about the earlier event which we had uh, talked about. Because we have the memory in build uh, in our uh, workflow, it automatically understands that which event I'm talking about. So over here also, I am only telling delete this event and not which kind of event. So let's do one thing. Let's uh, send it. So since the text workflow is not on, when we make it on, it will just get the message, get the event, delete event. And if we come over here and we can see the event has been deleted. So this is the thing that we are going to make. Also one thing, one more thing that well, if you have the client database, you can specify with whom you want the meeting. So now if I write a message, create a Google Calendar event titled Team Sync on Sunday 2 p.m. with attendees Om and Raj. And if I send this message, let's go and test workflow. Now it ran, it got the message, then it's um, from the notion, it got the person with whom I want to make the um, meeting. Then it created the event with the attendees and the event has been created. Now if, if I click on this, you can see that the attendees has been sent the mail regarding the meeting they have. So this is the powerful workflow that we are going to create today. Stick till the end because there are so many things that you might see from the above, but there are so many things that we need to configure. So let's get started. So first we need a trigger from Telegram. So to get a trigger, um, we have set up our agent and an agent. First we need the Telegram trigger. So for that, let's click on plus button, right? Telegram. And from Telegram, we can see there are so many different, different actions which you can do, but we are interested in trigger. So in trigger, we need on message. So when you click on on message, you will get this trigger part over here and we need to connect with our channel. So for that, you need to create your own channel. So for that, we need to search bot father and inside the bot father, just write new bot. So once a new bot is written, it will ask for the name of the new bot. So you have to give some kind of a name. Then again, it will ask to give us some name, which must end with bot. So I have given an entire demo test bot and then it will give us the access key. This access key you have to take and just create a new credential. Let me show you. Create a new credential. And over here, this base URL will remain the same. Just paste the access key and you are good to go. Okay. So I have already done. So I won't be doing it again. So and we need trigger on message. So if I do test step, what will happen? So let me go to my bot. Let me write, uh, hey there. Okay. And if I send it, now if you see, we got the message in the text, we can see there is a hey there. So your telegram trigger has been successfully set up. So now, once we are getting the message, we need to send this message to an AI agent, which is connected with so many different, different nodes over you. So let's start understanding each and every node over you. So let's first understand what is how we configured AI agent. So to get the AI agent, we need to click on uh, plus button. Inside this, write AI agent. So you can see there is an AI agent part over you. AI agent need three things. There is a chat model, which is compulsion, because we need to specify which chat model we are using. So in our case, we are using open AI chat model. There is a memory and there is tool. So let's first understand what is chat model. So chat model is something LLM tool. It could be Gemini, it could be Grog, it could be uh, Claude, it could be anything. For me, I'm using a chat model of uh, GPT, the latest model GPT 4.1. You can use any model, but 
just new version i was testing so i am using gpt 4.1 okay and that's it you need to have a uh, open ai account it's very simple thing okay if you are not knowing how to do it i'll paste a video on uh, i button you can see how you can set up your credential for the open ai okay and then once you got this we need tool so you can see there are so many different different tools over here there is a get event which gets the event which are there in a calendar there is a create event which creates the event for us there is update event which updates the event there is delete event and there is the create event with attendees and there is notion okay the notion is just to get the client which i have in my database so if i show you this is a temporary database which i have created i have only two clients raj and om so from here it automatically fetches which kind of a client i have and accordingly creates an event with the attendees okay so let's see how each and everyone work so let's first go to the ai agent inside ai agent we can see we are just passing the message which we got from the telegram so from the telegram we can see that we just use this text message and paste it over here okay and let's remove this part is the same thing okay and then the main thing that everything works is in the system message system message is the one which does all the work in this inside system message we can see you are a calendar assistant your responsibility include creating getting and deleting events in the user calendar now this is the tool thing we are explaining which kind of a tool we have and when to call which tool okay you can see i am telling use create event with attendees when an event include participant okay so whenever i will specify any person in my message it will go to the notion fetch the participant and create an event with the participants okay there is a normal create event when i want to create an event only for my purpose and no participant i want to get involved in that okay there is get event what it does it gets all the meeting in a specified time slot which i mentioned in my message it will give me all the events okay there is a delete event by the name you must be knowing it deletes the event whichever events i specify it updates the event there is a very special thing about delete and update event so you can see it is written that use delete event to, to delete an events obviously okay then you must use get event first to get the id of the event because we need to delete the event but which event so for that we need to call the get event tool first and get the id and then use that id inside the delete event to delete that event same thing happens with the update events over here okay and use notion tool to get the contact information available so whatever contact information i have use the notion tool whenever i mention any kind of a person name in my message go to the notion get the person name and just use in the tool okay and there are some rules rules are turn the incoming query into the action so whenever i am passing some message turn into action ignore the clarification question because i don't want any clarification i just want action to be not taken it could be create action delete update anything okay and also send the event link with output sometime it works now we need to write this message more properly so that we get the event link okay and also we need to specify what kind of time is right now because if i am specifying that i want to create an event on sunday but which sunday it could be tomorrow sunday it could be next week sunday which sunday so when i specify the time it will automatically understand that i want to create an event which is coming on sunday okay if duration of the event is isn't specified assume it will be one hour so if i am not specifying the end time if i am saying create an uh, meeting which starts at 11 am 11 to what if it is not specified then create a one hour meeting 11 am to 12 pm okay this is the prompt this is very simple prompt you can modify the prompt accordingly what you want but this is a very sweet and simple prompt which we have written so once we understood this now our main job is to include these all calendar events okay they are very simple don't worry let's start one by one so for this thing we need to click on this plus tool plus tool part and write the google calendar google calendar so you can see there is google calendar tool over here okay once that is been done click on that uh, tool now we need to connect with our uh, google calendar account so for that let's go to create new credential and just do sign in with google and you are good you are good to go and uh, don't forget to specify which account you are creating for okay this this will help you to organize stay organized so this this is done i will close it okay now we want to have a event resource okay and we want to have a get many because since we are creating an event for the get event we want to have get many events you don't want a single event there is a option if i want only single event but we want uh, get many okay now once you connected we will get a list for which account you want because there could be multiple part over here if you see over here also if i make it big uh let me make it big and over here you can see i have multiple accounts over here holiday holiday in india india and my freelance i want only freelance part over here okay let's make it small yeah so we have selected one of the email id then everything will live up to the model okay so we want written all part 
by default it will be something like just uh, specify some kind of a name but we want model to interpret what kind of information they are asking for so we'll click on this part and it will be defined automatically by model so after and before means after which time you want the event before which time you want the event so in middle part it will give us the event for everything we have just set to the define automatically by model so model will automatically decide after which time we want and uh, before which time according to that message which we have specified from the telegram okay this is done for the get event very simple thing okay let's go for the create event so for the create event upper part remains the same now we want to create event start time okay it will be same thing define automatically by model if you are not seeing just click this button as you can see over here let the model define the parameter as click on this the start time will be defined automatically end time will be defined automatically then the use default reminder if you want to send a reminder accordingly the meeting is coming so join the meeting and all that can be done in summary it will help you to define the title of the meeting okay this is a simple thing this is very simple part now so let's go to the create event with attendees so over here everything remains same just whenever we want to uh, include more field just go to the add field part over here and you can see there are uh, multiple different different fields over here if you want to understand what does the each and every field do the documentation of anytime is amazing so it specifies everything which way you want to do so if we are going for the create part in the create thing we will select and you can see all the options which are there which we can see in the drop down over here are specified in the documentation so you just come over here read watch what each and every do and just make it to define according to model and it will automatically figure it out so we, as we can see we have attended this define automatically by model summary define automatically by model okay this thing is done let's go to the update event inside update event we can see uh, everything remains same this operation is getting changed to updated okay and event id it will automatically fetch the event id so if you remember we in this ai agent we told that whenever we are doing update event part you must use the get event first to get the id to the event to update okay so it will automatically call the get event part and then get the id and that id will be placed over here and model will automatically define it same with the define flow update the event what what will be the start time what will be the end time what will be the summary everything will be done automatically okay and for the same for the delete event part just specify the event id and the id will be get deleted so this was all thing related to uh, calendar part now let's set up the notion part so for the notion we need to get the client information so for that we need to connect notion with any time so for that just go to again click on the plus part search for notion notion tool is over here okay once that is done let's create a notion we need to connect the credentials so for that what we need to do let's go to the notion inside the notion you can see whichever page you are just click on this three button um, in which you have the database click on this three button go to the connection go to the manage connection inside manage connection you can see we have dial up or manage integration over here you can see we need to create a new integration i have already created integration but i'll show you how to how we can make new integration just write the workflow which you want to integrate there can be multiple workflows just select which workflow you want as give the proper name it could be anatan test okay workflow then upload the logo and just and just save it okay let's save it then just click on configure integration setting you will get this id show and copy and just then click on the no user information and save and that's it you have got the integration updated id so we need this id to be pasting over here in any time go to notion click on the create new credential the id which we got just paste it over here and save it will automatically test and you can see the connection test has been successful so we have connected any time with notion but there is one more thing we need to do inside the notion so whichever database whichever page you are using it go to that page click on three dot in the connection part search for that which we created just now which you created any time and test just click on that so it is confirming that the, you have created the api but we need to confirm that this page is using this api so you can see i have already connected one and now one one more i connected both are using the database so once that is done we'll go to the anatan part we'll click on the operation get many because there are multiple operations over here we, we don't need to create the page we need to get the page but we need multiple pages at once so we need get many so we'll click on get many part from which database we need so we need from client db we need written all or multiple part so i have limited to 50 so at a time 50 uh, client data i can get if you want you can just click on written all it will get all the records which are there in the notion database then a simplified version of the data okay and that's it you need to do so now agent will automatically take care of this thing and you would get the answer and everything would work fine 
So now one more thing you would ask the question that how my agent is able to understand when I send this message, delete this event. Because in the message part, I only get the delete this event, but which event? So that everything is managed inside this memory part. So whenever we send any message, it is stored inside the memory and then it is sent with the uh, older message and things happen over there. Okay. So if I show you the demo, how does this memory work? Let's go to the set execution. Open any of the execution which we have done earlier and inside this memory, you can see we have two times. So it has referred the memory two times over here. If you click on this memory, inside the run part, you can see the first message that we sent was a create Google Calendar event title project kickoff on Sunday at 11 a.m. The second message that we sent was on the updated project kickoff timing to 11 a.m. So you can see both the messages are passing together and combining and understanding the message is talking about this event. So that's how it understands. That's how this memory thing works. Okay, so let's try send the message again. So let's do the test workflow. Then let's write the message um, create event with ohm. Let's say with only ohm I want on um, Monday. So on Monday at let's say 12 p.m. Okay, and title the event as um, test event. Let's send this message. This message is gone. As you can see, first it went to the open chat, chat part, then it went to the notion, then it went to the open memory part consume the memory, then it created the, uh, then it went to the create event with attendees. Then it's uh, created the event. And inside this event, you can see that we, event has been created with the ohm. Let's go to the execution. Inside execution, let's select the latest execution. Now you can understand everything properly over here. Inside this, we can see that the message came from this part, create event with ohm on uh, 12 p.m. Title the event as test event. Where it went to the AI agent part. Okay. Then it went to the memory. Inside the memory, we can see that uh, everything has been stored over here. Uh, yeah, you can see everything has been stored over here. And one more thing uh, to note inside the memory that we have set the context length as five. It means that the latest five message which you have sent, it will store that message. First message that came will get removed automatically. Okay, that's the meaning of context length message. Then it went to the uh, notion to get the uh, ohm information. Then it created the event. That, so that's simple is to create this workflow. So you can see now we have created the AI agent which understand what kind of message you are sending and it takes the action accordingly to create the events. I hope you got some kind of a valuable information from this video. This is just a very tip of the iceberg information that we have created over here. There can be so complex uh, agents workflow which you can create if you start learning and ending properly. So there are so many different, different things you need to learn. You, you need to get your hand dirty to understand how things work. Once you understand, you can create any kind of a workflow you want. You can create for your personal, you can create for your business, small business, you can create for your company as well. So if you find it valuable, send this video to the friend who are learning anything. Please press the like button, share it with your friend, comment your feedback, suggestion. I read that feedback and suggestion and get understanding what kind of video you want, what kind of improvement you want in the video. So we'll meet in the next video. Till then, take care.